All right, let's do a quick test. Let's make sure we're live. I see that up on YouTube. That's good to see. Um, I think we're ready to go. Shout out the one like that we have right off the bat, as always. Huge shout out. Let's go over to TikTok. Let's start it before I get distracted. Um, playing Warframe, blah, 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 blah. Come in. I'm streaming. Yeah, there you go. We're good to go. Let's do this. Yeah, whatever. 720p. Yeah, I don't care. Let's do it. All right. Here we go. Is it centered? Sorry, I'm messing with it. I'm messing with it at the zero minute mark. It didn't look centered. There you go. Okay, let's do it. Folks, what are we doing today? Before I get started, I want to say uh, today's a very special video. Obviously, we had companion rework last week. So this week we're doing companions. We're talking about uh, generally the big thing that I'm talking about is I thought that specific mods were going to be really, really powerful. But really what I found is like your companion is strong enough that it shouldn't really be dying. Like if as long if you have max rank primed uh, pack leader, your companion is essentially invincible at all times, as long as you're using a melee weapon. Like, unless you don't have a melee weapon equipped, you're pretty much fine. Like, you don't really need to worry about anything. Um, so that's the big one. And then the other thing, obviously, for Sentinels is uh, Primed Regen is going to make your Sentinel come back to life in less than 30 seconds. So uh, your, your Sentinel essentially just pops in and out quicker than you think. Um, but really what I was, you know... I was reading some stuff online about how Sentinels with the Aerial Bond buff kind of suck because uh, it creates this weird aura and it's, you know, bad for the lighting and, you know, whatever. But the basic gist of it is, like, all of your f companions are just as usable as before, but now they're a lot stronger and you don't really worry about them dying anymore. I see Wolf at the two-minute mark. Um, guess what? we're going to kind of go through the basic build. So the first thing that I'm going to say right off the bat, you know, we're, you see feline greenies. Feline greenies is of course the Adarza Kavat. Uh, they're going to give you 60% base crit chance um, for 10 seconds. But the thing is 10 seconds is going to get buffed by uh, this tech enhance. So you're getting 30% bonus ability duration. So what does that actually mean? Um, I guess it's 13 seconds. There you go. Easy math. Coming online for that race, dude. I mean, we could run some uh, uh, <laughs> relic runs, I guess. I've been thinking, like, I need to get some more forma. But anyway, yes. Cat's Eye is going to be my default go-to uh, pet for, like, 99.999% of the game. Literally, unless I'm using the Fenmore. And, we're, you know, we might as well just get into that right away, that... The Fenmore is such a weird weapon because it's you, you want a negative uh, crit chance build. So you want a negative crit chance build. So I'm not using Crit Cat. I'm instead using Pulsating Growth, which is the Saren Vulpophila. You know, it, it shoots a spore essentially the same as Saren uh, Viral Quill. Six quills at enemies within 20 meters. Uh, viral with 40% status chance. If a target is affected by Viral, a spore is added. Four second cool out. Four seconds is, like, not a long time. Really, really easy. And then, of course, the big one. Panzer Devolution devolves into its larval form when downed and attacks enemies with quills, dealing 60 viral damage each. Uh, regains true form after 30 seconds. So it's a functionally invincible animal. But now you also have Prime Pack Leader. So, of course, you're doubly invincible. So, yes, the big thing, Prime Pack Leader. Really, really criminal. 183 health. So, essentially... If you're at 2,000 health when you're using Hydroid, um, I mean, if you're if you're using any kind of decent melee weapon, you're getting six hits in one swing, so it's like game over. They're going to be max heal. Obviously, I still love Primed Animal Instinct, and of course, the triple uh, survivability setup. So, of course, you know, it's really going to be dependent on the frame, so... You know, Hydroid has some really goofy stats. He's got a fuck ton of shields and a lot of health, at least with my uh, Archon shards. And then, of course, he's going to get a decent amount of armor. I don't know if that armor is going to carry over. Oh, hang on one second. All right. Hang on. All right, folks. Um, so the big thing 
is pretty much just make sure you're using all three of the link mods. Oh, I did also want to say, um, I'm going to mention this a couple more times. Tatsu Prime. Yo. Tatsu Prime, super OP. It has a weird stat spread. Like, its radiation damage is, like, higher than all other stats. But it doesn't really matter because you're getting that forced slash proc on the heavy attack. So it's really, really criminal. Um, you're also going to notice that I'm using Synth Deconstruct. Uh, this is going to give me more health orbs. But also it's going to give me the Synth buff. Which isn't really useful on a lot of weapons. You know, like battery operated weapons or, um, you know, especially the Fenmore. Which is pretty much the only thing that I use a Vulpophila for. Um... So it's not really something that you need to worry about too much. Like, it's a pretty basic build. Essentially, in instead of using a bond mod to kind of revive your an, your animal faster, you're just slotting in the synth mods, and then that synth mod is going to get you like free uh, auto reload when it's uh, holstered. And you know that's just pretty pretty easy overall. Like, I found that like the basic gist of what this whole video is just like. Um, I don't see a need for the bond mods that are going to like revive your cat faster because it's like your your cat should not be dying like all any any animal that has primed pack leader shouldn't be dying and the only things that are going to die is going to be like your sentinels and then those are going to have uh primed regen so you're going to get a 25 second revival so it's like whatever you don't really need a bond mod if it's 25 seconds i mean god fuck I, you, you guys know how long is 25 seconds in a fucking hour long survival mission like whatever you still get the enemy radar that's that was the thing i was like thank god pablo you nailed it like that's all i need that's way too easy anyway that's pretty much the basic gist of an animal build i i did want to you know we've got a couple different animals that kind of come out on top obviously the the second follow-up choice is always the uh smita kavat because you're getting that charm buff uh, and you're getting that double... Oh, I can give you a Tatsu build. I think I have a regular Tatsu build. Yeah, Charm is going to give you that double uh, resources very rarely. But it's a long buff. So you, you know it when you get it. So once again, you're still using uh, Tech Enhance. So you're getting that bonus duration, uh, I think. And then, oh, this is a very fun situation where I'm actually just using Hasten Deflection. Because you don't have access... Oh, you do have access to Synth Deconstruct. But... I don't know, maybe you put Hasten Deflection in place of Synth Deconstruct in that other situation with the Volpophila, but the Vol the Volpophila can die forever and doesn't even matter, so who cares? Who cares? Like, seriously, it doesn't matter. Um, I think with these other cats, it's better to have full survivability just because, you know, it's not a Volpophila. It doesn't revive the same way, so, you know, that is kind of unique, but honestly, whatever. Like, it's basically the same build regardless. I mean, obviously Mischief is cool, but, you know, who cares? Um, I did want to say honorable mention, of course, Zuck Machine. This is just a MOA. So a MOA is cool because obviously you get the the Sentinel weapon. So you get this really fun, like, uh, yeah, this is just pure corrosive and cold. So cold is going to give you bonus critical damage and slow. And then the corrosive is going to get you um, corrosive because most of my weapons are viral so that's the basic gist of it is like now you get the double stat spread also this dude is kind of raw and crazy <laughs> he kind of goes wild uh he does get the the robotic mod so you get the shield charger and the guardian but the big two moas are all about the mods it's really like you have to craft all of them and then you get access to all the mods i think and then once you get all the mods you know whiplash mine and shockwave actuators really come out on top you get a knock down with the shockwave every 10 seconds and then you get a whiplash mine um i don't i don't know whenever you get it i don't care um once again accelerated deflection prime pack leader you know i'm not going to use synth deconstruct because this is just a standard animal so it's going to go down for a while uh dude shout out daniel he says uh what is my favorite youtuber doing today <laughs> uh what does it look like i'm doing a uh, companions we're talking all about the companion rework and the basic gist of it is like prime pack leader is going to be a fucking monster and then you're going to back that up with accelerated deflection and always using all three of these link vitality link fiber and li uh, link redirection wait ronald kuna jr how would you say that kuna or kuna sent a rose shout out ronald can i call you ron nice flannel one cent <laughs> shout out did i get it right i don't know if it's kuna or kuna but it's cool regardless i i love that name um yeah that's ron 
Good old Ron, Ronnie boy. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm getting distracted, folks. <laughs> this is the same build. This is literally the same. It's a baseball player. Oh, yeah, I have no idea who that is. Um, but yeah, it, look at this. Same build. Bonus recharge. I mean, what else am I going to say? Obviously, the MOAs are a little unique. Yeah, we can do a mod. Yeah, yeah, we can do a Tatsu build. Oh, look at this. A Phantasma build. Yeah, we'll look at that in a second. So that's, you know, those are the main types of uh animals obviously you know we've got things like the uh this is the best pre in my opinion because you're going to get this free 300 health on your necromech which is really the thing that i use it on is like your um you know this this little dude is going to give you at least some free healing you know every eight seconds oh that's actually pretty good so essentially you have five seconds on three seconds off because you know he's going to release it you're going to stand in it and then he's by the time the buff is over you've only got three seconds left on the cooldown so it's pretty nice as, as long as he's near you and of course you are getting a, a little dude who's going to come go run around and uh proc synth deconstruct so then you can get some free health orbs uh for your necromech so you're, you're getting double double necromech action is pretty savage um and then of course you get the free reload but you know this is this guy i mainly use for necromechs and of course look at this uh triple link setup prime pack leader hasten deflection and boom mecha recharge 90 percent shield recharge <laughs> So this dude is just like <laughs> he's got so much fucking shields. He's just he he's uh he's the old school uh what would you what did you call that the the uh, oh, decaying dragon key build where you just had infinite shield Katie. <laughs> oh, it's too good, folks. Anyway, um so those are basically the main animals. I mean, there's a couple other cool ones like I could mention like the hounds. I think that this one is kind of the one that I like the most. Because uh, you're going to get that null audit, which is going to uh, debuff all the Eximus. And I find that Eximus always end up being really, really fucking annoying. Um, basically the same build. I don't even have Link Redirection because I'm lazy because I don't really use the Hounds. Because I just don't find them very fun. Like Diversified Denial, whatever. I mean, to me, it's like if I'm using... Oh, this is kind of cool. You get Guardian. So, I mean, but this last slot would obviously be Link Redirection. And then you're just going. What's the fastest Goss setup? Uh, I don't know what his does his ones does his one speed scale like I guess you would just use uh, I think my goss build is I just use uh, uh, Infested mobility Yeah, goss on molt or like goss with infested mobility because you get that. I don't know if the the Bullet jump, you know the parkour speed affects how fast you zoom, but I, I don't know how that works um <laughs> bro <laughs> fetch wait what is this oh yes this is just a finisher this this dude just finishers people that's it uh, yeah he's oh he sucks garbage f tier i'm not even going to talk about most of the kubros most of them suck the other cool thing is that this guy also gets access to a um oh this is the wrong one this is bato 10 i want aka 10 because aka 10 is going to be puncture slash so puncture is going to give you more crit chance slash is going to be slash and then you're going to get viral so slash and viral are pretty close this is a zero f this is a one form of build just so i can put buzzkill on there that's all the slash you can get out of there you don't get access to carnus mandible at least from what i can tell um so that's the basic gist of it anyway that's a hound and then of course the fucking helminth charger eight forma <laughs> strain eruption this guy's really, really, he's a cool build. He's a really, really fun build. 1200 slash, 900 viral, just with frost jaw. You're also getting strain eruption, uh, free maggots, and then the grow cysts, whatever. It spawns maggots. I don't care. Uh, trample, uh, dealing 160 damage. I, I guess this is the attack, but this is also a stun. But, you know, you get the idea. Peak the phantasma. Yeah, hang on. I want to load out of this. Um, and then yeah, basically the same build, but you get Maul in there and you're actually getting some pretty decent damage Although the status chance is fucking stupidly low. So who cares? Um, so that's I think that covers all the animals Yeah, obviously you've got a couple different vulva phylas. I do think the one that gives you dodge chance is pretty good But it like it's like one attack and then it goes on cooldown. And it's like fuck off, dude I guess when it dodges it goes on cooldown, but hang on. Let's see the phantasma wheel Prime Ravage, that's a point. Point Blank is a point. Uh, where's your... Oh, that is crit damage. Oh, no. Where's your... Uh, 
Oh, do you not have uh, the? Do you not have the? The fucking <laughs> Hell's Chamber? Is that the mod I'm thinking of? Here, Hell's Chamber. Yeah. Yeah, you get that from uh. Yeah, strength. You just need enough strength with molt. Yeah, I think that's right. I'm trying to grind to unlock and build him and want to make Goss look. You have seven. Yeah, put Hell's Chamber in. Well, I mean, you don't have the form of it, I guess. But yeah, that's the last mod. And then you, you need to get Galvanized Chamber. Because Galvanized Chamber on a shotgun is like so fucking criminal. Like, it's way too good. It's, oh, well, I just love shotguns. But you know me, dude. Like, oh, and dude. Oh, I wanted to say, we also need to do the Archon Hunt. It's already Wednesday. I was saving the Archon Hunt. But anyway, I'm getting distracted. Let's talk about my favorite Sentinels. The Sentinel build is very, very blasé. Uh, they're definitely going to die more often. I am going to use both Synth Deconstruct and Synth Fiber because it's going to give me that 10% reload. Uh, it's pretty savage. 30 meter range with the Verglass. Oh, that's Sweeper Prime. So the Verglass is just a laser. That's it. It's just a laser that I've built with uh, corrosive damage. That's pretty much it. I want to see if I can refresh this and make it smaller. Because it's always such a weird size. Here we go. No, it's going to stay like that. Anyway, I'm going to pause this. Um, yeah, but the Verglass just a laser. So you're getting a 30 meter targeting range and, you know... Death Cube will always be my favorite because it's just um, f a free energy orb every 10 kills. And, you know, I don't know how accurate the Verglass is at, like, actually hitting enemies but or multiple enemies all at once. But I do like it. I think it's pretty useful. Um, obviously, I'm still trying to use Repair Kit because, you know, it has pitiful shields. I could build for shields. I don't really feel like it because this dude is going to respawn every 25 seconds. It doesn't matter. So he's going to die a lot. Guardian is very nice. Energy generator is a must on this guy. And then of course, just prime regen and enhanced vitality. That's it. And of course, prime uh, animal instinct. So then you go, that's the build. Very basic. It's going to be the same on pretty much all of them. I don't really use sentinels very much anymore. Um, boom, the exact same build ammo case instead of energy generator. Uh, I'll swap this so it looks a little bit better. There you go. So that's basic gist of it, I guess I would say. Um, I guess the whole thing is just like, hey, whatever, man. You're gonna, it's gonna die a lot, I guess. I don't know. I'm not really gonna play Sentinels anymore because, I mean, folks, you, you, you heard what I said at the beginning. Maybe you didn't, but I'm using Crit Cat and that's it. Just Crit Cat, nothing else. Um, so we could talk about a couple other ones. The other one that I really use a lot is Prisma Shade. I don't use it with a weapon because all this dude does is make you invisible. So it's I use it on spy missions. I use it with Ivara so I don't have to go invisible. And I still get the same movement speed. So that's pretty much it. Um, but yeah, I don't use Sentinels. I guess that's pretty much the whole companion build. I mean, they're very like... I'm using Crit Cat and that's it. But the one that I really wanted to talk about is like, we're doing a proper Hydroid build. Obviously the Hydroid build didn't change at all. Yeah, yeah, you just gotta slot in Galvanized Cell. But other than that, no, the Phantasma build was fantastic, as always. And the Phantasma, the, the laser is actually the most savage. It's insanity. Um, it's, it's just gonna like, it's just gonna do numbers. It's gonna do big numbers. Um, but we're moving on, folks. So now I am talking about a couple different builds. We're going to do Hydroid real quick, and then I'm going to do a little bit more of Degoth, and then I'm going to do a little bit more of Grendel, because I kind of changed their builds around. I think I'm going to do like a 10-minute Degoth and 10-minute Grendel, so um, we can get Wild Wolf in chat or in gameplay. So anyway, here's the Hydroid build. Um, obviously, we got four blue Archon shards, two for health, two for energy maximum. Uh, you're going to notice that his fourth ability is Coil Horizon at 33 meters, but let's get right into it. Here we go. Okay. Uh, 280% range, 95% strength, 179 duration. Uh, the duration is just primed continuity and auger message. Obviously you have every single range mod you need. Um, and then the double Umbra is going to put you at 95 plus growing power. You're going to be at 120. You're going to be at 120 even, and you got adaptation. The big thing, plunder. Once you're over a hundred percent, plunder is going to just do numbers. You're going to be crushing you know fucking you're gonna be over a thousand armor without even sweating it like it's just too easy 
So you just spam this shit. You'll get you'll get the biggest number and chill. You got a 44 second duration on that. That's pretty savage. Um, obviously, Coil Horizon is my choice as an active CC ability that you can literally put on any frame. And then, of course, Tempest Barrage is going to give you just the most criminal numbers. You're going to see that like these corrosive numbers are just going to melt everything. It's very even at such a low strength, like you're just pressing four and then pressing one and then everything dies and that's it. And then you just spam four from there on out. And you know, your Coil Horizon does use 50 energy. So the big downside is that he is gonna be kind of an energy hog. Um, but I think it's pretty much okay. The big trade or, you know, the really nice thing is that because you have plunder in this slot, you're gonna be essentially a triple Umbra tank, but more in the sense that you have over a thousand armor with adaptation. So Arcane Avenger, easy slot, uh, free 45% base crit chance on top of your crit cat, which we talked about earlier. So, um, you know, that's the basic hydroid build. Once again, I am buffing him as much as I can to health shards. Obviously, we have the art of the amber shard because it's an easy slot and you kind of need it. And of course, two energy shards. So we're really just buffing him up. But he's so nice now as like a, as like a, I don't even know what to call him. Like he is like a true like DPS CC. Like you just press four and then you press one and everything fucking dies. And it's just, oh my God. Okay, let's look at the burst in. Where is this guy? He's still not even above the Stradivar. Okay, anyway, we're getting distracted. Let's go. Uh, do you want to get some Wild Wolf gameplay going? Let's get Wild Wolf in here. So now's the time, folks, where I get to say Cross Friends is here. Um, you can see on TikTok, my username is sitting right there for everyone to see. Um, add me as a friend. Message me. Oh, he's offline. Okay. Add me as a friend. Message me. And then that's how we're going to do it and become part of the peanut gallery. That's the trade-off. If you want to be in the gameplay, then you got to be in the peanut gallery. You got to be in the bottom left. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I got to see your name in the bottom left and then we'll cycle through. That's that's the basic gist of it. Just to keep it cuz you know, it, this is a show after all. I'm trying to keep the ball rolling. I'm trying to uh prevent dead air. So, you know, the big gist is like we're going to be doing gameplay. And we're going to get you guys in some gameplay. And, you know, once cross friends is a thing and cross clan is a thing, that's the other thing. You can join the clan. You can donate to the mutagen sample fund because that's all I need is the HEMA. And then that's it. You're good. You don't need to worry about it anymore. And then the, and then the clan will have everything. And then from then on out, the clan is just a blessing. And you don't have to worry about donating mutagen samples. But until that day when we have the HEMA, this is where we're at. So obviously what you guys are seeing right off the bat, and what I'm hearing is that I don't have audio. Is attempting to purge you from this place. Stand by for life support. Now I have audio. But the other thing to keep in mind is you're seeing a lot of red numbers. Uh, I need to spam plunder real quick. I'm gonna I'm getting deleted. I'm not gonna get deleted, I'm actively getting deleted. Uh, I'm going to hit that real quick. I'm going to hit this. What kind of numbers can I get? 723, that's pretty good. Uh, obviously, we're going to spam Coil Horizon just because it's going to completely pacify everything. And then here's the thing where we're going to go to Black and White Man. So obviously, his little aura is going to make it a lot harder to actually see the energy or the enemy targeting thing. Here. Oh, I don't have enough energy. Fuck. Yeah, I have been spamming that, dude. Hang on one second. So this is the basic hydroid gameplay, is just keep your three active, Boop. 1800 armor, there you go, that's what I need to see. Uh, keep your one active, pick a very tight area, and then hit four every once in a while, and then that's the basic gist of it. You're seeing just the map wipage, and then look, my cat's low on health, oh I guess, oh look at this, is this not triggering prime pack, oh it's not triggering prime pack feeder, is it? Well that kind of sucks, doesn't it? Is it triggering it now? What's going on? Is how is this how is this ability working? How is this mod working? Is this actually working or not, folks? I'm I'm looking at my cat and I'm seeing weird numbers. Okay, it looks like now it's triggering. There we go. So there you go, that's what you want to see. 
You want to see those numbers going up? I, I kind of moved the thing far enough. Oh, I'm completely blocking the cat. Yeah, you can't even see the cat. Oh, you can kind of see the overguard, actually. So you can see that my cat's overguard is chilling. He's doing pretty much fine. So I guess the glaive is working. Obviously, I haven't cast my three in a while, so let's do this. 578. Oh, that's okay. Hit this, and then hit four. And then that's the basic gist of it. Okay, there you go. And then use the burst in, and then, you know, your cat doesn't have to worry about dying if there's nothing alive around you. There you go. I think I need to charge it up all the way as a heavy attack. This cat is very, very confusing. I do not know how this ability works. I'm, I'm like actively learning right now. 434 on the armor. That's fucking worthless. I guess we can hit this. There you go. 904. Much better. Hit that. And then there you go. And that's... Oh my god. You're seeing that. You're seeing that instant armor strip. <laughs> Anything that lives is getting stripped. Whoa. First of all, phrasing. But second of all, let's get right into it. I mean, folks. Oh, there's black and white. Man. Where is he? He's over... Uh, where's he going? Oh, he's traveling. He's traveling uh, down there. So we're going to follow him. I just need that strength buff so I can get some really criminal numbers for you guys. But yeah, I mean, you can see my cat is just fine. He's got a thousand shields and 1700 health. Like, I don't think he's worrying a lot. I don't think he's worrying too much about dying. I think he's pretty much fine. And it's like the big thing is that overguard is going to give you... You're seeing that split second of invincibility. You're getting lots and lots of shield gating. You're getting two levels of shield gating for your cat. I mean, it's really, really nice. The big thing is I do need to be actually attacking more often. I do need to actually be spamming abilities more often. And then my cat doesn't really need to worry as much about dying. Where is he? But obviously the big thing is I am still heavily, heavily favoring my melee weapon. To kind of make sure that my cat is always alive so I don't really have to worry about anything. Um, I think the big thing is like keep keep an eye on the little gauge. It's really nice that they do this whole gauge system because it makes it way easier to actually like see what's going on. But you're, you're seeing it. We're getting 280% bonus corrosive damage. Um, so we're just basically keeping Tempest Barrage active the whole time. And then whenever you feel a little bit stressed you hit 4. And then you just... Oh, oh, look at this. An Acolyte spawned. Oh, look at this. Good thing my Falcor does fucking 10,000 damage. <laughs> like, these guys, they don't matter. They, like... If you're a little bit stressed, if you feel like your cat's gonna die... Obviously, if you're, if you're going... If you're going raw into some, like, solo survival gameplay, like, you're gonna be using a Glaive. Like, at least from what I know. You're gonna even probably be using Glaive Prime or, like, a... You know, an ex uh, Exodia Contagion build. Like, oh, it's just too classic. Let's see if we can one-shot these dudes for a million damage. Okay, let's snag a little bit of life support. Should we go for 10 minutes? Why don't we go for 10 minutes, folks? Let's see if we can last 10 minutes. I feel like I'm risking the biscuit by just running at, s what, 7% duration right now? Here, let's let's just pop both of these. At 3%, we're popping them. Let's go for 10 minutes. Why not? Or at least go for two Acolyte spawns. You know, maybe I'm not going for 10 minutes. But at least two Acolytes. Because I'll be, I'll be in for a little bit longer. It's nice to have a little bit extra. I don't think it's really anything I'm worrying about too much. Like, look at this, folks. This is, this is the Hydroid gameplay. This is what you want to see. He's just cruising. Hydroid's like, nah, fuck all you guys. Like, you think you have anything on me? You think you can do anything to me? Nope. Sorry. He's now, like, uh, dude, he's, like, this is, like, Wukong rework on steroids. Like, this is just, oh, my God. Just way too good. So, we're going to come around here. I mean, obviously, you're seeing I'm just clearing him out like it's nothing. Um, what was that? 1,200 armor? Just, I mean, obviously, we're in the black and white zone, so we're going to get that huge buff. But it's just way too easy. We're going to hit this. How many enemies is that? What? A dozen? Maybe 20? Yeah, and then you just... Oh, you're, you're a little bit worried that you won't be able to kill the enemies? 
Good thing you have the burst in Incarnan or the Falcor. Like, seriously, dude. This is just comical at this point. <laughs> I mean, this is just not even gameplay. Here, I gotta hit this. I'm being a little bit lazy. I think this is enough for the three. That is enough for the three. And then I'm a little bit stressed. Hit the four and clear him out in one hit. Obviously, you know I'm getting the corrosive damage buff. So when I'm using the Falcor, which has built in, you know, corrosive damage because it has that electricity damage, you're just doing numbers. Like, you're just, oh my god, it's hilarious. It's like goofy at this point. It's not even like gameplay. It's not even anything I'm like worried about. Like, dude, if you're actually paying attention, if you're not just shooting the shit and like acting like an idiot, then dude, it's easy. This Hydra rework is like, all they had to do was be like, oh yeah, Puddle sucks. And everyone's like, yeah, Puddle sucks. And then, then, then Pablo's like, are you sure? It's like, do we really have to say it? And it's, it's like, I guess, I guess you have a point, guys. I guess you have a point. So then, you know, one thing led to another and now we're here. Now we're just cruising. And now we, of course, didn't even change the build. All I did was move Coil Horizon from your three to your four. Because, you know... Hydroids 4 is essentially just Nezha's spears all over again, and I'm like, dude, I I subsumed Nezha's spears like a long time ago. I was like, I do not want to freeze enemies in place. I want to bring them all together so I can use less ammo. And and when I was when I was in that phase, then I was like, oh, okay, okay, I see what to do. Whenever I get that freeze ability, just instant subsume. Just be like, whatever. Like, uh. Citrine had the exact same thing where Citrine's fourth ability like s freezes enemies in like this weird cone pattern and it kind of moves slow um, And I was like nah, whatever fuck it gone And I just replaced it with a uh, well I probably replaced it with coil horizon because now Citrine is like a 250% range build and so you're just getting like I mean you're still getting like a hundred and seventy percent status chance it, obviously it's not a huge amount but it's it's in this area that it's just like oh I hate the Gosphor. I don't I don't use it because like the Gosphor is just like I don't even know if it goes up like I don't know if it works up this slope I don't know if it works in any of this shit like it seems like it <sighs> I want to like it what should I do after I build Goss I think I missed that um what would I say? Well, there's a lot of shit. I mean, Star Chart, first of all, New War, Zeramin, you know, maybe get a couple really strong Kuba weapons, maybe get a couple really strong Incarnins, like, just go wild. There's a lot of shit to do. The world is your oyster, dude. Warframe is your oyster. That's what I always say, like, I think, uh... I think Destiny is a lot more linear in a lot of ways. I always compare them because it's like, you know, the friend, my guys, my friends at work, they're always, you know, on it about Destiny. I'm like, dude, I don't know if I could do it. Like, they're very similar games in the end, but it's also like Warframe is going to give you more of that arcade shit where it's going to be like, oh, here's a new game mode. Here's a new way to play the game. Here's a new, uh, you know, little loop or little thread or little gameplay style that you can get into. Like, you know, the whole Daviri, Daviri is just so S tier. Like, it's just so good. Like, Daviri just nails it on all fronts. And it's like, but I feel like if I showed that to my homies, they'd be like, what the hell is this? They'd be like, oh, you get random weapons? And it's like, yeah, it only really works if you play the game the way I play it, which is like, oh, I literally have every single weapon. I, I realized, I was like, oh, I, I was only short, like, 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 a, like a dozen weapons, like maybe 10 or more weapons. And I was like, oh, this is, actually isn't that hard. And then once you have all the weapons, you're like, oh, the mire actually isn't that bad when you get a bunch of Daviri buffs going and you're just, you know, you get like a, a shit ton of melee crit chance and crit damage and you get fire damage and toxin damage and it's like, damn, game died after removing raids. Dude, I feel it. I, I feel like there's a lot of people who say that, but I don't know. It's just like, you got to keep it up, man. Either you like it or you don't, but I'm not gonna. I'm not here to say, oh, you can or you can't like the game. Like the game or don't, you know. We get into it. It's serious gameplay though. Like, like once you're into it, it's like, oh, it's so much fun. Like this game just, um, they just do it so well. Like every single time they add something, I'm just like so impressed, and I'm always just like, dude, give me more of that. Give me more of that. Like I want to see you keep doing crazy shit like that like when railjack came out i was like fuck you're gonna add uh you're gonna add fucking necromex and railjacks i was like god damn you guys are killing it um i want to say uh your mom followed shout out your mom 
Uh, shout out Meep for saying, finally got the last chroma part down to my last Aya. Dude. Chroma is like such a cool frame. But he's really like a... He's kind of a weird one. Like, the chroma build is like a triple umbra tank insanely buff build but it's kind of a weird one uh anyway before i get distracted let's talk about dagoth oh i did want to say we are only like 13 followers away well i guess 12 followers away now from getting 4,000 followers so dude fucking shout out tiktok you guys are killing it like every stream by the time the stream rolls around we are like 20 followers up or like at least 10 followers up 11 followers away dude um, Armando Macias, did I say that right? Macias, did I say that? Yeah, 392 following. He says 11, dude, shout out. Um, before I get distracted, let's talk about Dagoth. Obviously, the first and only shard I will ever use on a normal frame is the Amber Archon shard for bonus energy. Uh, we're going to come over here. Um, the build is classic. 75% range because I'm using just Stretch and Augur Reach. Um, I'm trying to max out strength, so I'm hitting 192 with uh, Double Umbra, Augur Secrets, Power Drift, and then I'm actually getting 25% over that, so I'm, I am getting 200% power strength, which is pretty good. Um, adaptation, of course. I am using Guardian and Grace. You kind of need it, because um, the real buff that you're talking about is her 3. And the basic gist of this buff is like um, free crit damage, as long as you don't die. If you die, then you lose it for 25 seconds, and then you have it back. So don't die, and you'll be fine. Uh, excuse me. Um, the other big ability that we're going to talk about, we'll talk about the subsume last. Obviously, I got rid of her fourth. I don't like it. I got rid of it. Uh, you know, it's a fucking horse stampede. It's kind of slow. It takes too long. I don't like it. Um, but anyway, the big build, start with Doom. You Doom enemies in a cone. It's not a very big cone, and it doesn't really hit a lot of enemies. But then once the Doom is active, immediately after you cast Doom, you cast Word Scythes. And you're going to be spamming Word Scythes essentially the entire mission. So if you're doing an Exterminate, you're going to be pressing Doom a lot more because the, the, the Doom effect is going to go away. But spamming Word Scythes is going to increase that Doom. It's going to exponentially increase it across a huge area. So you're getting 26 meters, which is pretty, pretty nice. And then, of course, the last thing. You know when we talk about DPS abilities, that my obvious instant slot, replacing her 4, which is really slow, is just Breach Surge to just maximize the DPS. Because you're going to get these cascading damage effects where they scale off of each other just infinitely. And it's just way too savage. So that's pretty much it. Growing power is really nice. Uh, Grace and Guardian is pretty necessary. But let's get right into it, folks. I think this is it's time for some real gameplay. So we're going to do Dagoth, and then we're going to do Grendel Prime, and then we're out of here. We're going to do some actual gameplay. We're 38 minutes in, so we're going to do another 10-minute uh, loop on Circulus. Actually, let's see how far we are in here. I, was, I do want to say my left leg is just fucking killing me. Burstin hasn't moved. Okay, whatever. All right, let's do it. Too easy. Let's go. Coming over here, Circulus, level 80, or 180 to 200. That's the basic gist of it. Let's do it. We're in. We're going live. I mean, I don't think it's too crazy. Honestly, folks, you guys know how it is. You know, it's you're going to get the three bosses in the conjunction missions, but you know, if you're if you're any decent Warframe player, you're you're not worried about it. Like, come on, folks. This is real gameplay. Come on, snap him. Snap him in the face. There you go. I mean, yeah, the Burstin does kind of function as a single shot rifle, but that little bit of recoil is going to fuck with you just enough to be a, kind of annoying, but do not worry about it. So let's come over here. I do think Word Scythe triggers uh, this. Oh, no, it doesn't. Okay, good. So that's actually pretty good. Um, what I do want is I want black and white man. Here he is. Okay, here's black and white man. So we're going to get growing power. We're going to get black and white man. And we're going to get 158% crit damage. So that's the big one. Crit damage. Now the big thing with Doom, the damage that you build up is going to be uh, re-affected later on. So you trigger Doom, you deal damage, and then the little Doom effect 
triggers later on to deal the final blow. So um, in most cases, you're going to kill everything before the doom even triggers. So whatever. Seriously, whatever. But yeah, I mean, folks, check it out. Just classic gameplay. Tenno, if you have a I'm going to come around here, click this, click this. And look at that. 1400 overguard. I guess it is technically proccing it. I'm not sure. We're going to come over here, clear these guys out. Yeah, you're seeing it. We're still getting monster numbers. Like, this crit cat coming in clutch. We're going to come around, click Doom one more time, do the word size, hit him with Reach Surge. And you're going to see, it's going to clear him out even if I don't do anything. Because it's just so much built up damage. It's just going to trigger all at once. And, you know, phrasing and all, but let's just get right into it. So, obviously, you don't... I don't think you need to be pressing breach surge like all the all the time you don't need to be hitting it that much because honestly the the word sites are going to do most of the work you're pretty much fine i do think it's always so weird how like this you know dagoth is has word sites and then hellboy comes out with the web of word and it's just like ooh, that's kind of fun <laughs> it's weird but you know who lo i love it i mean who doesn't love it we're gonna come over here See, and then this is the part that, you know, this will always be the downside of the Incarnans is that you discharge it and then you're just spamming headshots for the for the love of God. You just, okay, click some Doom, click this, click Breach Surge. Now, obviously, the side effect of Breach Surge is that you're also getting this really nice CC. Like, these enemies are just, they're pacified in a really nice way. And then they also kind of trigger these sparks on other enemies. So, it's just like this nice back and forth that... It's very straightforward. It's going to keep you alive. It's also going to be a really, really nice DPS boost. So, you know, we're at two minutes. We're doing pretty good. We're still kind of decaying slowly, but I think we're doing all right. So I'm going to hit this and then this and then this. So you see all three of those at once. Um, I still can't decide whether I want to cast Breach Surge first or cast Word Size first. That's, that is the big thing that I'm still trying to figure out. So we're going to do Doom, Breach Surge, Word Size. I think that's the better combo. Because you see the the word sites are triggering the breach surges. They're triggering the breaches. And that's what you want. So you're going to come over here. Uh, she is super energy hungry. Super energy hungry. Also the same with Hydroid. Um, you're, they're really just sucking it down. Way too good. I'm going to hit this and pretty much... You're seeing just clear him out. Clear him out like it's nothing. The homie is rocking 2200 overguard. He is just chilling. But you're seeing now. He's got 500 shields. He's kind of fucked. He doesn't have a lot of shields. Uh, so we're going to hit this. We're going to hit this. And this. See, I don't know if I did it in the right order. No, I didn't. See, it didn't trigger the breach spark. So you do need to do breach surge first. And then you'll get that wiping capability. There you go. But you can trigger word size as many times as you want. And it's going to trigger those breaches over and over again. So, you know, just check it out. Check it out. <laughs> Where's the black and white dude? Is he down here? He is down here. Here, we'll just come down here and then all the enemies will follow us. Slowly but surely, they're all, they'll all follow us. We're at 82%. So you're seeing, we're actually rocking like way harder than the than Hydroid ever could. So, you know, this is the basic gameplay. We're going to hit this and then this. Look at that, dude. Too easy. Clear him out. Seriously, just wiping him like it's nothing. This is what I talk about when I talk about map wipes. It's just like every enemy on the minimap just goes away. There's nothing left. And this is a dangerous situation. I have a discharged Incarnan. So this is probably a situation where I just use the Falcor. I don't really feel the need to try and get headshots on Angst. I can just delete him with the Falcor. Literally in like a couple seconds. There you go. There's an Eximus that I blitz for like a thousand, you know, literally a hundred percent of his health in an instant and then he's gone and then now I'm just chilling now we're just cruising oh dude this I, I'm gonna I'm gonna play some infinite runners when I finish this I've been desiring that I want to say dude I want I wanted to go back and beat Neo I wanted to do it so I you know I did I did some oopsies but you know how it is folks I don't really want to play that game too much it's old at this point it's old news even Neo 2 at this point, I don't really want to play. It's it's kind of archaic after Wo Long, so I'm just like, I'm just waiting for them to do a harder version of the Thousand Mile Journey, and then I'm, 
And then it's game over. Then it's game over. That's all I'm playing. Because I want it to be rough as fuck. And I want it to be stressful. And, oh, look at this. The cat's almost dead. Let's see how fast I can heal my cat. That's two hits. Three hits. He's at 1,900. He's at 2,000. Uh, this is a situation where I'm going to do this, two, and then one. And then that's probably going to clear all of them out. So there you go. Cat is healed in one second. So, of course... Um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but the secret to the cat build is actually the the mod that lets you survive fatal attacks. So I'm pretty sure he survived a fatal attack, and I can't believe I missed that in the video. But yeah, I mean, that mod is just insanely critical. So we'll have to see. Can we see Zephyr gameplay? Yeah, I can show off Zephyr. Here, we'll finish this. I do still need to show off Grendel. Because I, I want to put all three of these builds in here. So you're going to you're gonna see all of them. Grendel is the last one. Grendel is also very fun. I love Grendel. Oh, here's the Oculus. There you go. So we're going to get the... We're going to get the Sentinels now. Or the Sentients. Alright. Too easy. Come around here. Click these guys. Do this. Do that. And look at this, everything's dead. Doesn't even matter. Alright, too easy. Yeah, and then, I mean, this is the basic gist of a survival mission. It's like you pick a spot that's very easy to defend. That you're not worried about dying in. I'm gonna hit Breach Surge right now. I'm gonna hit this. I'm gonna hit this. And then guess what? Everything dies. So that's the thing, is a lot of these Warframes are going to be very, very similar, where they're just map wipe central. You just click a button, click a couple more buttons, and then it's just game over. It's just insanity. And you can see, this kind of cascading damage effect is really a hallmark of Warframe that you're not really going to be able to produce in basically any other game, where you have these, like, maximized stats that allow you to just essentially delete everything with a very basic button combo and then you, if you're a little bit worried then you're just spamming your your uh, glaive and then you're just essentially wiping the entire field in an instant and so it's like regardless of whether you have armor strip like you you guys know i'm not really doing these missions for long enough to the point where you need an armor strip ability like essentially i'm going in for maybe an hour so they're not going to get to really high levels so i'm not super super worried about the gameplay i can pretty much rely on just having the burst in having a glaive and just being able to essentially delete everything and not stress too much about the actual nuances of what weapon I'm using, you know, what's the actual setup. Like pretty much most of my builds, they're either going to be this cascading damage setup or they're going to be Hydroid where, they, where he has like the CC ability that's going to come in clutch. I think the biggest thing, there you go, I died. Okay, and the cat died. So that's the thing, I let the... I let the damage get the better of me. I wasn't spamming my abilities enough, so you're going to get that failure in an instant. But don't worry about it. If you die, if you fall down, you're not super worried. Like, we can just sit here and see how long it takes. Obviously, it's 60 seconds for the cat to revive. But if we really wanted to revive him, we can just go here and revive him. Yeah, like, it's not super hard. And then, you know, oh, I guess it doesn't stick. Okay, very cool. But you can see, like, it's not super difficult. We're going to come over here. Click these dudes, do this, do that. And you can see we're at the 9 minute mark. So we're just waiting for the second Acolyte spawn. And then we're basically out of here. Not super hard. Let's come around here. I mean, this is just too easy. Yeah, the big thing is like, yeah, it's going to look a little worse on TikTok. Because, you know, there's a lot of shit happening right now. And, you know, it's only set at 720p. But I think you guys are getting the gist of it. It's just damage numbers on top of damage numbers you know breaches obviously we're still over 60 fps so you guys aren't even noticing a dip i'm the only one noticing the dip we are rocking sometimes like 77 but that's basically like when i'm spamming breach surge and we're getting like a zillion deep uh, like damage ticks a second it's just going to be a little bit crazy and hectic i'm going to clear these guys out i'm going to hit this and then that and then with a little bit of burst in action let's actually hit this one more time you just click these guys and then they die. Okay, these guys are taking... F oh, because Dagoth is going to slow them down. Okay. Uh, I'm playing Dagoth right now. So Dagoth is the new frame. 
Let's see if I can clear him out. See how quickly. Oh, that's embarrassing. He's still alive. I'm dead. Okay, we're good. Don't doesn't matter. So I've got Dagoth, I've got Burson and Karnan, I've got uh, Falcor as my glaive. Did I see a strong dude? Yeah, okay, let's hit this, let's hit this, let's hit this, and then of course, glaive it up, dude. Glaive it up, homies. And they're all dead. So you can see, it's not really about, m m it's not really about numbers. It's not about armor strip, it's not about any of that. It's really just about how often can you spam your abilities? How quickly can you cast the sequence of abilities that you know is guaranteed to just delete everything? Four, two, one. If you just cast that in a row, essentially everything standing in front of you is dead. Okay, we're at the 10 minute mark. We're out of here. Let's go. Peace out, homies. We're here. We're gone. Let's do it. So that's 10 minutes with Dagoth. I mean, was that easy or was that easy? Seriously, folks, like, Dagoth is a classic. Dagoth is an instant yes. And Dagoth is also insanely easy to get. Like, so, so easy to get. As long as you have Cirrus unlocked and you have... Uh, any syndicate unlocked I think to like the second or third level you're gonna have access to Dagoth which has proven to be a top top tier new frame like one of the easiest ones to get and also just criminally strong just the perfect choice for any gameplay uh, holy shit we have 1900 likes you guys have been bombing it and I haven't even realized god damn shout out TikTok um, let's get right into it we're at the 50 minute mark let's get it twisted let's not get it twisted actually 500 endo, whatever. Two Riven Slivers, cool. Don't care. Don't care. Uh, let's come over here. Guess what, folks? That's the goth. Who else are we playing today? Who else Who else could we possibly be playing? You guys know him. You guys love him. Big old chonky boy himself, Grendel Prime. With his signature Prime Ephemera. Look at that. Uh, obviously the only amber shard the only shard I'm using is the amber shard um, And the other thing I've subsumed his four which is Regurgitate I've subsumed that with roar. I don't really have a huge amount of stats um, Let's get into it. Here we go Biggest thing to note 250 energy arcane grace arcane avenger 3400 health we're rocking 167 duration and 234 on the strength Let's get into it um, big thing, Nourish is going to give you essentially full energy with one energy orb, so don't worry about it. I want to say we had uh, Chris Castellano, 735 following. Shout out, Chris. Um, Nourish is insanely fun. You're going to always want to keep enemies in your belly because that's going to put you in that over a thousand armor territory. Um, and then you're also going to want to keep Roar active. You are going to get over 200%, but you're still going to only get about 75% uh, damage, which is still pretty nice. But, you know, you're getting a double buff from Arcane Avenger. Actually, you're getting a triple buff, quadruple buff. Nourish is going to give you energy and viral. Um, Roar is going to be number three. Arcane Avenger is number four. Obviously, Catapult is kind of a meme at this point. Um... But Pulverize is instant classic, over 100% armor strip, so you're just going in it for 5 seconds, knocking enemies around, having a little fun with it, and then you're popping out. Um, it's using not a lot of energy, it's using 1.8 energy a second, but that's only if you don't have en enemies in your belly. If you do have enemies, kill them, roll around, and then when they're dead, go out of the ball and then suck more up. That's the basic gameplay loop. Um, the other thing is Catapult uses 5 energy, whatever, fuck off. Uh, Sup Bud also followed. Shout out Sup Bud. Um, so the other thing. Double Umbra is giving us decent strength. We also have Augur Secrets, but the big thing, Transient Fortitude is minus 27.5% ability duration. So we really need Nira's Hatred and Augur Message, and then we're getting some decent uh, duration numbers. We're getting 50 seconds on the Roar. 41 seconds on nourish and that's the basic gist of it. Okay, I think that covers everything uh, Growing power instant slot to get us to like 250 percent strength um, But that's pretty much it adaptation always going to be an instant slot primed continuity always going to be an instant slot um, Only 250 energy we could buff that with some uh, blue archon shards, but I don't really feel the need to and you'll You'll understand why when we get into the gameplay once again we're going in for 10 minutes, and then um, we'll, we'll do some Zephyr gameplay. I know when I'm going to play Zephyr, so if, if Strife Cutter is still here, 
in about 10 minutes i think uh we're gonna do some archon hunts and i know the excavation is coming up so we're gonna do that and i think that's gonna be fun because zephyr is gonna trivialize the excavation and it's gonna be fucking hilarious because <laughs> i dude excavation suck but you know now in this game mode before. with zephyr Holy it's just gonna be really really dumb the okay they're dead seed. kind of embarrassing let's come over here snag this and then we're gonna come around here what, what do we got what do we got anything good come over here click these dudes there you go too easy and then you just clear them out like it's nothing okay so watch this suck the enemies five enemies slam the nourish slam the roar and then now you don't really care about whether you have enemies in your belly because now you're just going to wipe. Now everything is dead. And you're really going to rely a lot more on the burst in. Because you don't really have a lot of uh, DPS abilities. You're kind of just a double buff tank frame. That's basically it. So your goal is to move fast. Eat ass. Like you guys know how it is folks. I recently got back into Warframe. Been a long time. There's so much I have to relearn. Yeah. But I think it's for the better. I think they've changed a lot of stuff to make it more streamlined. To make it more straightforward. I think it's going to be a lot simpler to get into, and you know you're going to you're going to you're going to fall into it a lot quicker because a lot of it is just the same grind as you used to. It, it hasn't really changed a lot. It's more just like it's gotten simpler. There's some better mods. There's this there's the steel path. You know there's there's arbitrations, which is going to give you access to some really really strong, you know, survivability and damage mods that are going to kind of send you, you know, way to infinity and beyond and it's going to be super super fun where the fuck is my weapon who has my weapon are you kidding me where's my weapon there you go he stole it fucking piece of shit dingus okay let's snag a couple dudes again as you're seeing like the ability to zuck enemies in this game with uh, grendel is just hilarious it's super goofy so let's come over here uh, let's get a better nourish. There you go. And then, of course, we're snagging this as well. So look at this. My cat has 4,500 health. He's essentially never going to die. Are you Malaysian? Uh, no. I'm uh, Indian. But yeah, I mean, I could I could see the confusion. I do, I do get that kind of ethnically ambiguous vibe going a lot. That's pretty much my... That's my look. That's what you expect from me. So let's click these dudes. Obviously, you're seeing that I'm just deleting them in one hit. So we need some beefier enemies if we really want to charge this guy up. So we're gonna ha we're gonna hold off until we see at least somebody a little bit stronger, like some kind of Eximus. Oh, dude, A attacks in chat just popped in to say hi. I gotta go in a minute, dude. Shout out A attacks. I appreciate it. Appreciate all the love. There's a good hit. There's a good hit. Okay, now we're fully torqued and ready for gameplay. Let's get right into it, folks. Uh, let's zuckle all these dudes. And then we're going to hit Nourish. We're going to hit Roar. Uh, we're going to get... How much Roar? 108%. Isn't that savage, folks? Once you get over 100%, that's when you're in the goofy numbers. That's what you really want to see. You know, like my Wisp build has like 130% strength. So you're not from Malaysia. No, I'm from India. Or my dad's from India. My mom's from Kansas. So I'm only a halfie. So I do kind of give off that vibe. Here we go. Let's snag this dude. Snag. All five. Too easy. Snag this. Pop that. And guess what, folks? It's just it's just too simple at this point. You're going to come in and clear out all these enemies. Obviously, you're getting some absurd buffs. So the burst in is just going to become even better than it was before. I'm not even aiming. I'm just kind of pointing in a direction you know, based on the minimap, and then whenever, you know, whenever the minimap looks less red, then I move on. You know, that's that's the power of the map wipe. That's the purpose of the minimap is to just give you a guide about like, okay, go over here, clear them out, go over here, clear them out, you know, back and forth, back and forth. Till the end of time, folks. Keep some enemies in your belly, but also you have 3,400 health, so it's like, are you really that worried about dying? I don't think so. I found that sometimes I'm a little silly and I just do dumb shit. But you're seeing that those numbers. Like, that is just fucking criminal numbers over there. I can't stand for it. I can't honor it. I won't allow it. We're just DPSing these dudes like it's fucking nothing. 
I'm a Warframe streamer too, dude. Riptide, U uh, Riptide UPB. Excuse me, Riptide UTB. Shout out Riptide, dude. They know you're here. Yeah, it's good to see you. I'm trying to stream more, cause I'm I've been thinking about taking a break from recording videos, but I still want to stream. I think I think it would still be fun to stream. So I've been thinking about streaming on like Monday and Tuesday as well, but I don't know. I'll have to think about that. I'm not sure about that one. I'll snag this guy. I'll pop this. I'll clear out these dudes. Here we go. Too easy. Yeah, I'm not sure. I wanna I wanna figure it out. I wanna do some classic gameplay. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna clear these guys out. And then guess what? It's I mean we're we're at the five minute mark. Okay, we're at the five minute mark. But this is the last uh this is the last Warframe we're gonna show off at level two hundred. Clear out these dudes. There's one. Yeah, we're at 23% uh, survival. We're pretty good. Uh, what's my MR? I am Legendary 3 max rank. I'm not a founder, so I'm not technically the max rank, but I'm as high as you can get without being a founder. So, like, my whole thing is, like, not only do I have every weapon, but I try to actually use every weapon. Like, for the most part, what I found is, like, you know when a weapon sucks, but if a weapon is worthwhile, if it's in the S tier or the meta category, you should at least try to use it. And most of them, it's like, yeah, the dude, the burst in incarnate. It's like, yeah, it may not be as good as the fucking Kuva Brahma, but yeah, not everything is as good as the Kuva Brahma. So you, you know, you don't really need to compare everything to that. So you can see my cat's suffering a little bit. I don't know if Nourish is gonna heal him. No, Nourish is not gonna heal him. So I do have to spam my glaive to actually heal him. So kind of sucks a little bit, but it's okay. Not a big deal. Not a super rough situation we're just coming in and clearing out all these dudes i mean it's just like folks is it easy or is it easy 4500 health like jesus fucking christ and then of course i'm rocking 3000 what 3200 3500 something like that but yeah we're at the six minute mark um when we close this out i guess we'll just go back to go do another shit where i'm using grendel prime right now um, obviously the big thing with Grendel Prime is that he is literally just a triple quadruple buff frame. Oh, we're running at 54 FPS. Oh, we're back to normal. So there was some hiccup. We were running a little bit slower. But we're doing okay now. I'm not super worried. It is kind of nice because my computer is heating up the room. It's actually making it a really nice temperature in here. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to hit Nourish. I already got Roar active. Yeah, we're getting 78% on Roar. That's pretty good, but, you know, it's not like super criminal numbers. But yeah, you're seeing, folks. I'm at 42% on the survival bar. I am just clearing enemies out even better than Hydroid. Like, it is just insanity how effective these, you know, just having a quadruple buff is for this gameplay. Like, it just makes things so simple. Shout out Leo for that one. Um, but yeah, dude, shout out Riptide. I mean, dude, Riptide. Send me a fucking friend request. I got my username down there. Because we'll get you in the peanut gallery. And then I'll be in your peanut gallery. Although I can't guarantee that. I'm always pretty bad. Like, if I have time to myself, I am just sitting and chilling. And, like, I'm, I'm trying to finish Neo right now. So I, like, I like power leveled myself. And then now I'm just, you know, trying to finish the last few missions. Because I, I just didn't. I was fucking lazy. I should have done it. We'll hit this and roar. And we'll be pretty much good. Because, you know, the first Neo does kind of suck. And I was really under Like, really under leveled. So it did, it was kind of F tier shit, like, I was like, damn, oh my god, I didn't realize how bad it was. Just got him crafted, I didn't know he was like that. Yeah, he's a quadruple buff, so you're getting two buffs from Nourish, you're getting another buff from Roar, and then if you're, if you're lucky, you can also get another buff from Arcane Avenger. So you're getting some really, really criminal numbers, like, as you can see, you're getting, like, giga red crits, and then you're also just, like, absolutely clearing them out with Roar, like, it's just way 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 too easy we have enough uh incarnate charge that we can also clear out this dude without any trouble oh he's gonna use uh tempest barrage on me and it's gonna be really annoying but look at that he's dead doesn't even matter i tell you what boy i tell you what boy so there's the last acolyte i think we're out of here i think we can call it good yeah we'll wait for the 10 minute mark i guess there you go. He stole that shit. Snag it back. Let's clear these guys out so I can refresh this. Oh, nice. My left monitor starts going out. I love it. 
Oh, folks, I did want to say, so I have a I have a one foot USB C cable coming, and I have a one foot mini HDMI cable, but I've essentially created like this tiny setup that fits in like two backpacks, and I can bring it anywhere, and it's a 15 inch display and a switch light. Oh, I just failed the mission. Well, that's okay. Whatever. I got distracted, but it, it doesn't really matter, folks. We're, we wanted to get the second Acolyte. I'm not going to stay any longer. It doesn't matter, but yeah, that's it, folks. I was being lazy. Um, what makes you pick Falcor over other Glaives? Uh, Brandon Ebner. Uh, Brandon, literally the only reason I'm using the Falcor and not the Glaive Prime is because the Glaive Prime is already so insanely powerful that I just try not to use it as much as possible. Like, the Glaive Prime is the most game-breaking weapon in the entire game. Like, it bypasses damage attenuation. Acolytes are back, yeah. So Acolytes show up in the Steel Path, and when you kill them, you're awarded Steel Essence. And so if you have the uh, if you have the booster, then you're gonna get four Steel Essence, and then you can use that to get uh, or uh, Umbra Forma. You can use that to get Rivens. You can use that to get uh, uh, Kuva. You can use that to get uh, a lot of different really powerful. St you can use that to get. Uh, primary and secondary arcanes which is huge you can get primary and secondary arcane adapters so essentially you know how you have arcanes for your warframes and arcanes for certain melee weapons now you have arcanes for pistols and and rifles and all that shit so you get insanely strong buffs like the most classic buff of all time is just called Ready for this? Primary Merciless. On kill, 30% damage, stacks 12 times. So 30 times 4 is 1.2. So you're getting 1.2 times 4. And you're, uh, whatever that number is. Uh, yeah, because you're, no, times 3. So you're getting, uh, 3.6. So you're getting basically 3.5 times bonus damage. Or 3.6 times bonus damage. So that's going to be way too criminal. It's just a flat buff. On top of anything, arcanes are my language, yes. And the, the the primary and secondary arcanes are insanely easy to farm if you have a good build. Because you just run survival missions and they just spawn. Shout out Leo for following. Leo, you are number uh, 3990, I think. You're num you're, you're, we are 10 away, I think. If I'm, if I'm calculating that right. Anyway, that's the Burstin. Hasn't moved an inch. That's Grendel. Hasn't moved an inch. Let's go back to Xenuric. Oh, we got um, Ascension following. Shout out. Number nine. Burstin is that strong? Yeah, Burstin Incarnate. So that's the other thing is the there is a new system that came out with Daviri where you run these Steel Pass circuits and you get these Incarnate adapters. So Gamma Core turns into a... Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's basically a grenade that pulls enemies in and then detonates. And we can show the stats on this. You're rocking 90% crit chance, 61% status. Uh, you're rocking 26,000 damage with a 5 meter AoE. So essentially it's going to pull all enemies within 5 meters and then uh, delete them. The one thing that really sucks is that it has built in cold damage. So you're getting 5,600 viral and only 4,200 heat. So you're not going to be able to get those powerful heat procs like you want. It's going to suck. Uh, weekend main, you are number eight away, I think, if I'm if I'm doing the number right. Like we are we are we are dead close to four thousand. And folks, I do also want to say um, next week I will be taking a break from uh, videos. So next Friday will probably be my last. No, wait, wait. The following Friday. So not not um november not early november but the second week of november i'm going to be taking a break for probably november and december so uh, uh i'm going to be you know still streaming but not doing three videos a week because it's kind of a grind uh, i don't have a twitch but i do have a youtube uh, and you can go to my profile and go to my youtube there have a good night homie this made me want to get back on warframe uh shout out jay's rampage also shout out uh, jay's rampage for dropping some likes um, but anyway, we're, we're getting distracted. So I'm using uh, Anku and Karnan. Really low on the list. I'm using Gamma Core and Karnan. Let's just go. Let's do some real serious gameplay. We're in. We're live. We're ready to do this. Let's just get it. So, of course, what are we doing, folks? We're doing Archon Hunts. This is how we're going to close out the stream. Because look at this. Rhino with 300% strength buff. 300%. 
and we get a 40% chance when we're fighting Amar, so it's pretty good chance that we're going to get a Tau Forged Red, which is going to be really nice. So our rescue mission I can do solo, but the excavation, um, actually I don't know if that dude is still there, but yeah, I'm going to use Dagoth actually, because I need to rank Dagoth up, so that's what the one I'm going to use. Here, let's go. Rescue I can easily do solo. It's just too easy. Oh my god. <laughs> that scared me. Brandon, follow, uh, subscribing. And it does work, dude. I, It, it happens so infrequently, but I'm glad it does work. <laughs> yeah, and I think I can turn that... Um, yeah, the alert box only shows up on stream. Yeah, okay, that's good. So it won't show up on the video recording anywhere because the or the audio recording. So I don't, I don't have to worry about it actually showing up. Shout out, Brandon. Uh, let's keep it moving, folks. I don't want to get distracted. Yeah, of course, the Gamma Core and Karnan, criminally easy to charge. You just laser them in the face, and then they get fully charged. And then you're just torqued in an instant. Seriously torqued in an instant. Spam this dude as much as I can. Swap this. And while I can, let's keep this buff active so I can hit this. There you go. Okay, too easy. Now we just roll. Because now we know that we can pretty much delete everything because we're getting that nice crit damage buff. Let's just keep it moving. Way too easy. I mean, folks. It's just a rescue mission. If you guys, if you can't do a rescue mission solo, damn, I feel for you folks. Live on Twitch. Or live on YouTube. Yeah, I'm live on YouTube. And yeah, that's the thing is when I'm done with the YouTube video, I'm going to add some, uh, you know, some time code so you guys can go into the video and search up you know oh, i want to see the hydroid build again i want to see the i want to see the grendel test footage again like if you guys want to go back and break that down like it'll all be available for you on the youtube that's my whole point is like i want the youtube to be there so it's a lot easier for you to check the vods like i think the vods are it's a really good home for vods and you know what you'll also notice is like dude if you guys are paying attention those YouTube VODs, they get big numbers. They get numbers after the fact that is just really nice. So shout out all the YouTube homies who watch after the fact. I see ya. I see the views. I'm watching. You guys are going to get me a uh, partner pretty soon. Like if I can keep it up, my whole point is like I want to figure out a, a solution with my job where I can kind of... Uh, I want to be... Oh god, dude. I'm going to fail this fucking mission. Because I'm picking the wrong one. Shit. This better be the last one. God damn it. It was the last one. Oh my god. This is so shitty, dude. Oh my god. I fucking hate this mission so much. That's the thing that sucks. I should have probably just gone in with auto hack and just saw if I could auto hack a bunch of them. Because, dude, that sucks ass. Fuck. That's why I hate rescue. It's just that's what you hate the most. But yeah, what was I even saying? Oh yeah, no, like... Most of these videos get pretty good views after the fact. If I can actually make it about something. If I can actually make it about, oh, let's talk about companions. And then let's also talk a little bit about Hydroid and, and uh, you know, Dagoth and Grendel. Like, I think the, those builds I've kind of cemented now. They're, they're, they, are, they aren't changing. I'm not moving anything around with Dagoth. Like, Dagoth is just way too classic. Way too fun. Jesus Christ. Come over here. Snag this. So yeah, I'm going to have to probably just auto-hack a bunch of those guys. So I don't know if I'm going to die or what. But I think that's just going to be how I have to do it. Because, you know, maybe I get lucky. Maybe I don't. But I don't want to be deleted. I don't want to fail the mission twice. Because that's just lame. That's fucking stupid. I do want to at least try and finish this Archon Hunt. You know, I might get to the actual showdown and fuck it up. But... At least with Rhino having 300% strength, I think he's going to have so much stats that it's not even going to matter. So let's see if I can get a couple auto hacks. Oh, I'm dead in an instant. Okay, is it going to... Is it going to tell me which one they're in? Am I just wasting time now? There's an auto hack. Oh my god, and it was the first one. Fuck off. God, I hate this game so much. We're out of here. I have two health. I didn't even heal. I was just running around invincible. Just looking like a fool. Looking like an idiot. Yeah, dude. I'm ready. I'm ready to take a break. I'm ready to... I've, Dude. I've... 
arcade games, the whole series has finally hit 200 games. So I was like, fuck, dude, I'm going to take a break. We're going to come back strong. Uh, I'm going to, you know, kind of, I'm going to do a kind of a thorough breakdown about like, maybe I redo some classic videos. Maybe I try and spruce them up because I want to make them look nicer. Like some of those videos look a little shitty and the audio shit sucks. What level? Damn. Yeah. Uh, Carbo Nation. Yeah. These are, this is a Archon Hunt. So they're going to be like level 150 at least. They're essentially going to be steel path enemies. So they are very dangerous, but uh, the fucking the wardens just deleted me in one second so i was not prepared for that i was not prepared for that at all that was good i like that that's good to see uh, i'm gonna get some water okay here we go let's do this all right so, next up, I do think we are just going to play the excavation as Dagoth, but we are going to do this public. This is not a mission that I'm going to do solo. It's going to be a pain in the ass. It's going to be a fucking 20 minute mission, I know it. I think I only need like 6, but, you know, I, I think it's still going to be pretty rough. But yeah, let's just, let's get into a fucking Archon hunt. Let's do it. Too easy, folks. Too easy. I do think, my goal is that when I... When I take a break, I can make a, you know, thank you for the 4,000 uh, followers video because, dude, oh, I really appreciate it. I mean, you guys are the best. Like, the videos, like, West of Dead did really, really well, so I was really happy about that. So, dude, shout out everyone that watches. You know, I think the, I don't think I have a lot of crossover between the streaming audience and the video audience, but, like, dude. Those videos, they, they they stick around. They do pretty well. Like, a lot of them have been getting, like, okay views after the fact. Like, but the, the whole point is, like, it's really, really fun. Like, it's it's fun to do these videos. I have enough of them. I just, I don't, I'm, I don't want to buy a bunch more games. Like, because I'm at the point where I'm, I'm, I'm far enough into isometric games that I need to start buying more. Because I actually have run out of games to play. So I'm at the point where I'm like, oh, fuck, I got to do this. Oh, I want to break this instantly. I don't want to let this guy use this. Oh, am I going to have the stats for it? I don't know if I'm going to have the stats for it. Also, I don't know if this guy is going to actually survive. I'm going to probably need to hit this. Do this. Yeah, I don't know if there's... Yeah, there are still people doing Archon Hunts. Good, 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 good. So, yeah, let's clear some of these dudes out. I'm going to need to definitely use Breach Surge in this situation. And I need to see if I can get to six times combo multiplier. Because this guy, I'm probably going to need to use a lot more melee. But you're seeing when I'm using a normal melee, my cat is essentially never going to die. Because I'm getting, you know, way more guaranteed hits. Way more simple hits. Like, always going to be at max. Super easy. Here, we'll just drop this one nearby. Oh, we got a rhino. I wonder what the rhino's strength is. Yeah, so we're just going to drop a couple of these mines down, and it's just going to clear them out. Uh, we got Des, Des Roy 5 sharing the live. Maybe that's Dead Des Roy's. Oh, 63. Oh, God. There's like a zillion enemies. Fuck. Do this. Do this. Do this. And everything should die. Okay, good. Five times combo multiplier. Six times combo. Okay, let's do it. So now we are officially in Incarnan territory. Oh, we are at 60 FPS. This shit is tanking, dude. Okay, now we're back up to 86. Okay, they already snagged all of them. What the hell? I didn't even know I could go down here. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ! Okay, come over here. Too easy. Snag these dudes. Uh, we can hit a Doom and this. It's probably going to lag my fucking PC. Uh, dude, Weekend Main sharing the live. Shout out Weekend Main. I'm going to come over here, clear these guys out. I mean, it's just too easy, folks. Let's see. The sh I, so I guess the max shields is only 2,000, so pretty lame. Uh, let's drop down here. I mean, I think for the most... Oh, God, we have a limbo. I forgot we had a limbo. Classic. Love limbo. Who doesn't love limbo? Except nobody loves limbo. But you guys should know that. I shouldn't even have to say that at this point. Uh, let's hit him with a little breach surge. What are we at? 55 FPS. Yeah, it always tanks when I'm in a in a multiplayer mission because it's like 
Too much shit is happening at once. It is just shitting the bed. Just really annoying. Not good at all. Okay, too easy. Come around here. So it's fully charged, fully torqued. We've got enough actual teammates that we're not super worried. Dude, this Rhino has 5,000 overguard. That's so shitty, dude. Oh, because is he a stun Rhino? He might be a stun Rhino. Oh. Kind of classic, dude. I love the... Yeah, he is a stun Rhino. He's a max range Rhino. When was the last time I saw a max range Rhino build? But yeah, he's got dog shit duration. You can see it barely lasts for any amount of time at all. Let's hit this. And then I do need to be getting these uh slide attacks going because that's going to give me the guaranteed slash procs that's the real secret with the anku and karnin is you're going to get those guaranteed slash look at those numbers dude look at these fucking numbers so we're going to come over here delete these guys and then look at that too easy they've already activated it i think the it is in the right order so i'm not going to trigger the other one by walking over to this one so I'm going to hang on to this one for a little bit. I'm just going to drop it there so someone can use it if it runs on shields. Like, if it runs low on shields, we'll do it. Uh, let's hit him with a little bit of Breach Surge and then Doom. And then, of course, Word Scythe. And then just clear him out. I mean, it's pretty basic. It's not something I'm super worried about. I'm going to come over here. Do this. All right. Too easy. You know, Limbo is coming in clutch. I do think he's a really nice addition. Oh, he's got Fenmore. Yeah, no wonder we're map wiping. Like, this dude is just clearing them out. It's just cringe. Shoot this, shoot a couple more, and they're going to all die. Uh, hit him with this. Doom, and then more word sites. Like, look at this combo, dude. Look at this map wiping potential. This is just Dagoth in a nutshell. Like, Dagoth has really come out on top for me because she's just so easy to get, and now she's just top, top tier, like, to the max. Not even, like, the most hilarious gameplay you've ever seen. Insanity, like just too easy. Ten cryotic, fucking idiot. Does not understand how this game works. You can't just activate one. You have to wait for other people. Especially in a fucking Archon hunt where the excavator is gonna be one shot by basically everything in the game. It does not work. We had Zay share the live. That's the new melee. Yeah. So this is an Anku. This is an Incarnan melee. So when you get to a hundred combo, when you hit an en enemies a hundred times, you heavy attack. And then it triggers in the incarnate form for like, I don't know, two minutes or three minutes or something crazy like that. And then as long as you're in incarnate mode, you get these special effects. Like you could have the ceramic dagger, which is going to throw out like sp explosive spectral daggers whenever you heavy attack. You could have the hate, which throws out the same explosives, but whenever you just normally attack. Like these weapons are just insanely, insanely powerful. And then the only trade-off is you just need a hundred combo. So like as melee weapons, they are just top, like literal god tier weapons. Like most Incarnans are so powerful that you're not even like worried about the gameplay. You just slot in an Incarnan melee and it just trivializes the entire game. Like if you get a fucking dual Icor Incarnan in Debiri, like there is no gameplay. Like you're just map wiping with without even breaking a sweat. You're not even like processing what's happening. You're just holding down melee, dude. Holding down melee. Yo, Tenno in the building. Coming from Danny Ellis Zane. Shout out Danny. Shout out Zay for sharing the live again. Dude, you guys are killing it. I mean, yeah, that's the basic gist of it. It's like... What DE is basically saying is like, if you can get to the end game, there are some weapons waiting for you that are just going to be like goofy, silly, overpowered weapons that are just going to be fucking insanity. Jonah following. Jonah, I think you are number uh, seven away from 4,000. I don't know what the actual number. I guess we're at, we're at 3993 or maybe 94. I'm not quite sure. 373. So we only need one full one and then one after that. Okay. Pretty easy. Too classic, too iconic. We're going to come over here, snag this, and then we're just going to keep it moving, folks. Yes, let's go. I'll be on Warframe tomorrow if you want to play together. Yeah, dude. Uh, join the Discord and then drop a drop something into the Discord. I get off, from, I get off of work at like 7 usually, so I, I can usually get on by like 7.30. But yeah, yeah, I've been trying to be better about that because I'm at the point in my gaming where I'm like actually genuinely running out of things to play. So I'm like, dude... Any excuse to play Warframe at this point, I should be better about this. 
And it's like, it'll be so much better just to be like, hey, get in the Discord. You guys need help. I've been kind of a, a stickler and a lazy dude about that. But, you know, I, I'm at the point where I'm like, okay, Hellboy is at a good point. I can kind of play that more for fun. You know, uh, uh, Elden Ring is at a good point. That's something I can just do for fun. Wo Long is about to be something I just do for fun. Um, and then f after that, it's like, I don't really feel the need to, like, keep playing them super religiously. And so, you know, Warframe just joins the circuit. My username is Cosmic Wolf. Uh, yeah, dude, Danny, uh, my... Well, let's see. So here's the thing, Danny. Here's what you do for me. Um, here's what I'll say. Join the Discord. We have a... We have a we have a section in there for usernames. And what I want you to do is add me as a friend on Warframe because now we have cross friends. I want you to join the Discord and then we'll get in some gameplay and we'll see if we can get we'll see if we can get more people in the Discord. Cause I've been I feel like I've been so lazy that people are like, dude, why am I gonna ask for help if everybody's gonna just ghost me? So I'm like, folks, it's it's time for Warframe hours. If I'm gonna be taking a break for a while, like for basically November and December, and I, I'll probably get back into it at the start of the new year then dude we've probably got some serious like we were gonna be we're gonna be doing more warframe we're gonna be doing more warframe streams um i'm gonna see if i can figure out a way where i might do like an eight to nine block of streaming a little bit later in the night where i can get other people in like um i was thinking like on i don't know on a saturday or on a sunday i think might be a good idea especially on a sunday like I think for the most part it's it's going to be pretty crazy, but I, I do want to do more streams on Sundays because I think that's the perfect time for it. We're at 41 FPS, so yeah, we're tanking the bed, but we're also map wiping, so who cares? Uh, I'm on PS4. Yeah, no, no, you can uh, you can cross friends, so you can actually friend request me on PS4. You know, if you want to join the clan, you can join the clan as well. Uh, you can contribute to the mutagen sample factory and then from there we're chilling folks so that's it that's the excavation and we do also have time for an archon hunt yeah so that's the thing we're i'm trying to get the discord going i've been lazy about it i want to do more stuff with the discord i'm thinking i might put out some more warframe videos on my youtube uh and try and come up with something fun for that because i do feel like i still want to put out some videos i want to put out some more long form videos on youtube and see if i can come up with a, a way to upload more videos because i don't think i can do a a stream but i think i can upload a video on on saturdays and then that will be instead of doing um you know instead of doing that shit, i'm gonna also upload you know very short warframe videos so i think you might see uh let's see you might see a dagoth build on next saturday no not this coming saturday but the saturday after that no no the saturday after that sometime in november you'll see a dagoth video which is a little late at that point so you know i might think about it we'll decide we'll decide folks anyway that's it time for the fun time to close it out with some goofiness um we've got the rhino prime build yeah guide vids yeah like i've been thinking about compressing some of my streams down into like a more concise video because like i think doing like these weapon reviews they get a little stale after a while but um i think it'll be cool to do like a like a kuva build or something but anyway we're getting distracted let's do an archon hunt with rhino having 300 percent bonus strength i just want to see what kind of goofy numbers we can get we're going to get some fucking really really stupid numbers it's going to be like the dumbest shit you've ever seen so let's just get right into it this is going to be how we close out the stream it's going to be real nice i've been thinking i've been thinking about doing a rhino archon hunt build that's just like here's how to delete all archons instantly with just the most op build in the entire game and just laugh at everything in existence so here's what we're going to do we're going to hit uh Zenuric bubble we're going to get a uh, growing power buff. We're going to hit our four. We're going to get 11,000 armor from that. We're going to hit another bubble buff. And then we're going to snag this. And we're going to get 1,800 armor. Are you fucking kidding me? One more bubble buff. And then we're going to snag this. And then let's see. We get 2,000, 4,000, 5,000. Oh my god. That is 4 million armor. That is fucking 4 million armor. Almost 5 million. Folks, 
Is that the most criminal? I'm going to clip this and put it in a video, folks. I'm going to clip this. This is going to be a video. Look at these fucking numbers. My face is not going to be in the video. My face does not need to be in the video. I'm using this footage. So the next video we do is going to be a Rhino Archon Hunt video. And it's literally just going to be, here is the most broken Rhino Archon Hunt in the entire game. Like, so criminal, so fucked up, just ruthless. Okay, anyway, let's get this buff. We're never going to lose 4 million armor. You got to take over my profile and tank it out. I'm so far behind. <laughs> Bro. <Bruh. laughs> yeah, I know, dude. It's just number. You haven't even seen the roar buff. Let's do the roar buff, folks. I haven't shown the roar buff. Let's get the bubble going. And then let's do some roar action. Here we go. Here's roar. 372% roar. Holy fuck. Oh my god, now where is he? That's the one. Look at these numbers, dude. Look at these goofy boy numbers. Look at he, look at me just deleting him. Oh my god. Yeesh! Yeah, I know, dude. Oh, these guys are still alive. Insanely cringe. Good thing I have a glaive, and I am using glaive prime in this situation. And I'm just wiping them out for a zillion, and he's gone. Okay, he's out of here. We've got 270 shots left in the Karnan. We should be enough. Uh, let's get another buff going. Rhino Hulk smash. <laughs> Dude, yeah. No, Rhino... Bro. For a long time, Rhino was the only frame that I used to level up weapons. Because I, I could give all of my squad mates a 200% roar buff. And then they would essentially do so much killing that I would max rank my weapon in one zone in ESO. Like, that's why I say... You should be doing ESO, but only if you have a really good support build. Because you're essentially reliant on your teammates getting all the kills. So they can give you 75% affinity to your weapon. And then you ma you can max rank your weapon very easily. I've max ranked my weapon in like less than a minute. Like literally in like 45 seconds. It will be at like not just 20 where like where you leave the mission. Where you need to finish the mission. It will get to 30 in like 45 seconds. If it's like a Saren and a Volt. Then you're just gonna, they're gonna map wipe. You're gonna be giving them like such a criminal damage buff that there is essentially no worry about anything. You're gonna be clearing out everything in existence. Look at this. I'm at 4.7 million armor. <laughs> I'm gonna clip out just the part where I just go, oh my fucking god. Like, I'm just going to clip that out and make it into a video. And that's going to be a video that goes up as like a freebie on uh, maybe next Wednesday, Saturday. Like I'm, I, I might prep the video because it's just going to be way too easy to do it. Just super simple. But then I do think we are going to talk about companions again. I don't know if I can reuse the thumbnail, but I might. I'll have to think about that one. Yeah, like folks, this is just way too easy. This is why I say, like, Warframe will always just be a numbers game. Like, like, what I love about a lot of Souls games is that, like, some bosses are absurdly difficult and will test your very limits. And then other bosses are just a DPS test. Like, some bosses, like Melania, are just going to be, like, how perfect is your build? How good are you at staggering bosses? How good are you at bleeding enemies? Or maybe using frostbite? How good are you at all this shit? And then Moog is just like, how much damage can you deal with your bleed procs? Because if you're not using bleed damage, you're essentially fucked. Like, because he's really only really weak to bleed damage. So you have to kind of use an arcane build and then you're just deleting him for a zillion damage like if you're using an arcane build you can like one phase moog like you can kill him before he goes phase two because he has to do all three he has to do trace duo unus and then he does uh nihil 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 and then if so you can actually out dps his nihil ability and then you literally don't have to worry about his dps numbers is that the dude oh that's so fucking stupid let's hit this He's going to do this. Guess what? I'm going to wipe these dudes out in one second. And numbers game. Oh, he's going to do this. I'm going to delete him for a zillion. Let's clear him out. Come on, numbers. He's dead. Okay, too easy. What is your rhino helmet? Um, my rhino helmet is parasitic armor. For real numbers for days. <laughs> Are the companions getting a reboot? Yeah, the companions already had a rework. 
Like, you're seeing that my companion is just buffed to a zillion. He's just never dying. Yeah, because he has, like, absurd shield regen. He has absurd shields. Because, of course, I have a, I have a shield build because I'm using parasitic armor. So, essentially, parasitic armor is going to convert all of your shields to armor. So, it scales with power strength. So, you're getting, like, a... You're getting an exponential power strength bonus. Did you see that? Did you see that? Did you see that my cat had all of its shields wiped out in one second? That's what we're talking about. God level puppies and cats. Absolutely. We closed out the stream. We succeeded. Now, what I want to do is I want to see how close we are to 4,000. Because right at the end, if we can cross... Oh, and we get a Tau Forged and a Pistol Riven. That's pretty good. Um... So I want to say right at the end, if we can cross 4,000, that would be insanity. We've got 2,800 likes. Uh, we've got fucking 64 comments. I need my dogs made to God level. Yeah, the dogs are so powerful now. The dogs are absolute insanity. It's literally incredible how fun it is. Uh, who are we putting a red or a, a Tau Forged red on? That's the question. Oh, we've got Kitty. I want to see what the Kitty's doing. He's fine. Okay, we're good. So yes, who are we putting a Tau Forged Red on? It could be uh, Wisp, although I think... Oh, we do already have two Tau Forged Reds. I'm not going to put two more. That's too fucked up. Um, Mesa got an insane buff. Yeah, dude. All right, who do we want to put a red on? Hmm. Because it's got to be a Power Strength Red. Uh, that's really the main use for a red at this point. Do I have Power Strength on this guy? I do have Ability Strength on this guy. That's a pretty good choice. Uh, although I, I would say it would be better on Mesa. Yes, that's going to be the better choice. We've got two durations and two strengths. So that's going to be the basic gist of it. I could put an Amber on her as well. That's kind of overkill with Mesa. Oh, hang on. He's good. All right, we're good. Yeah, let's put it on Mesa to close out the stream. Sorry, I'm all over the place right now. So yeah, let's put the red shard on Mesa and then we're pretty much good. And then we'll figure out where to put the normal red shard later. But yeah, this is going to close out the stream. So yeah, I want to see... Oh! Ooga Bunga. Oh, dude, Ooga Bunga. That sucks. You could have had Unga Bunga. Ooga Bunga 420. Hey, no, it still hits. It's even better sometimes. Uh, ability strength, 15% ability. We're at 264 on the strength and that's pretty fire. So that's it, folks. That's how we're closing out the stream. I mean, we're, we got to figure out where we're putting the red shards because I don't really know right now. I think most of my ability strength homies are chilling. So I'm, I think I'm pretty much good. I don't think I need a lot more. Like, who else would it be? Who else would... Like, probably any frame that has roar is someone that I would put ability strength on. But, like, look, we're at the top of the usage list. Like, like this dude might be nice because he has roar. And he's already getting 249 on the strength. But anyway, I'm getting distracted. Um... I just want to close it out. Let's close out the stream, folks. That was a pretty good one. Why don't we close it out by figuring out who needs a strength shard? No. Uh, like, it could be... No. Probably not very useful. Maybe Ash is a good choice because he only has 194 on the strength. So that's the thing. Is like You, you kind of want to put it on a frame that has roar, that has pretty low ability strength. Like, yeah, you can't put it on... Uh, you can't put it on this guy. What's your Discord? Uh, just go to the link in my dis in my uh, profile. Cora Red Shard for crit. Mirage is a good choice. Although I think Mirage I've built for other purposes. Yeah, I have I have energy maximum and health because she's kind of a energy hog. But yeah, Mirage is a great choice. I would say probably Ash is going to be the choice right now. Um, but yeah, let's do it on. I think Ash. Yeah, let's do it on Ash. Um, yeah, I don't, because we already have it on Oberon. We've got four ability strength shards on Oberon to get him to 232. And then his renewal gets to like over 100% heal a second, which is kind of what you want. Two, uh, two questions before you close out the stream. What the hell is this game and how do I play? Um, this is Warframe. It is a free to play looter shooter that has an insanely long road of progression. I will tell people it is kind of a big commitment to get into this game. Um, but if you're willing to only focus on a few frames, like the first thing I always say now from now on is get to goth, um, get to goth. She's an easy one to get. She's insanely OP. She's really, really fun. Yeah. I think Ash is the choice. So Degoth is a good choice. Get a couple prime frames. Um, yeah. Three to four hours. Yeah. Three to th three to 4,000 hours. Yeah. Like I have, 
I have uh uh shit. Where does it show it? Oh god, it doesn't show it here. Game overview. So I have currently I have seventy five hundred hours in this game, but my actual in mission time is drastically different. My in mission time is about. Uh, I don't know if I've crossed. I'm at 3,000 hours of in mission time. And I think I was at 100% completion, probably around the 2,000 hour mark. So, uh, literally a third of my gameplay has been post Legendary 3. Like, literally being a third of my gameplay is after I have everything completed. Yeah, like I have. I think I beat the game at like 1,000 uh, days completed. Something like that. Like, I'm almost at 2,000 days. I'm at 1,900 days. 1,950. I'm literally about to get my 1,950th day. So, I'm pretty close at this point. Uh, Flame Hand dropping some likes. Yeah, I'm nowhere near Legendary. Yeah, yeah, you'll get there. You'll get there. But, yeah, this is the max you can be. Of course, I've ranked up everything 720. You can see my real clout is actually just my usage list. Like, you can see I've been slowly chipping away at the Zorus. It's only at 8.1. Glaive at 6.2. Falcor at 6.0. Uh, if you go to the primaries, I've been chipping away at this. 4.7 on the Kuva Shakur, 4.5 on the Soma, 4.4 on Ignis, and then it drops off a cliff, and then you're getting into some more normal weapons. Uh, and then, of course, the pistols. Kuva Nucor is still at the top, 5.5. Uh, Tenant Cycron always going to be at the top, 4.4. Um, the kit guns are kind of bugged. The Vermis Splicer is very good. But, yeah, it's the classic. It's the classic. Uh, but, yeah, let's put a Red Archon Shard on... Um, Ash, and then that's about it, folks. Uh, shout out Random Taxpayer for following. We gotta see where we're at. We, we've gotta be close to 4,000 at this point. So we're putting a red shard on Ash. He's getting over 200% strength, so now his roar buff is actually gonna be over 60. And I, I think I also have growing power, so that's gonna be a clutch move. Uh, but yeah, I've kind of been milking it right at the end. I wanna see, uh, where we're at. I wanna see how close we are to 4,000. But yeah, there's Ash. Uh, his roar is going to be at 61 plus 25% uh, ability strength because I do have growing power. Yes, I do. Okay, perfect. How did you get red shards? So that's from Archon, Sh Archon Hunts. Archon Hunts are only available after the new war. And then once you finish the new war, then you unlock Archon Hunts. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the stream. I'm going back to the goth. And we're closing it out, folks. I really appreciate it. Do you have any secondary outspurts uh, need it for... Secondary outburst? Secondary what? Wait, I'm confused. Anyway, let's figure it out later. But that's it for the stream. Uh, YouTube, you guys have been great. YouTube, oh my god. 10 minutes of average view duration. That's insane. That's nice. Uh, shout out Brandon for subscribing uh, 30 minutes ago. Fucking insanity. We're, we're at 285. I mean, dude, we. I, it feels like only a year. It was literally only a year ago. Only a year ago, I was at 100 subscribers. And now I'm at almost... like. I might be at 300 subscribers in a year. I might have tripled my subscriber count. So that is like, oh my God. I, that's so huge. And I want to keep the ball rolling. You guys are going to be seeing more Warframe videos on YouTube. You guys are going to be seeing more Warframe streams. I'm going to be trying to cl cut out some of my streams to save me some time. So literally, I'm going to take the footage from the, war the Rhino build. That's going to be a video. I'm going to take the footage from the Dagoth build. That's going to be a video. So I don't have to make a Dagoth video. So we're going to have lots of videos coming out one after another. Um, they are, it is going to probably be, uh, Dagoth comes out first and then Grendel Prime just because Dagoth is newer and then Hydroid Prime. Actually, I might do Dagoth, Hydroid, and then Grendel, but like I already have the footage for them. That's the whole point. I already have the footage. Um, so yeah, you guys have been great. YouTube, shout out. Hour and 43, we're out of here. Take care, folks.